Okay guys, so I'm just making my exemplar for what we're going to be doing for our one point perspective uh, uh, exercise. So the first thing we're going to do is six centimeters down from the top of your page, we're going to rule a line and that's going to be obviously our horizon line. Now somewhere on there, it doesn't have to need to be in the center, absolutely, but I'm going to put mine in about 20 centimeters, I'm going to do a dot. And that's really important because that is our vanishing point. And everything else will be pointing towards that, that's an orthogonal, and it's a very important point in the entire piece that we're going to do. Now, I have almost everything I need. I'm going to be making sure I'm using a really sharp pencil. And actually, the sharper it is, the better for this. So I'm going to use a very, very sharp pencil. And the reason is not because I want to have a thin line, I actually want it to be a fine line. So the very first thing I'm going to do is one of the first things I taught you, which is just doing a cube. I'm going to put a cube at the front, and I'm going to do it very easily with a nice square to start things off. And that's made of two vertical and two horizontal, and some lines that are going to go towards the vanishing point. One, two, three. Three orthogonals. Now I'm going to close this off, nice and easy. Another vertical and a horizontal. I'm keeping my lines light, but a little bit darker than I normally would, just so you can see those lines at all. So I'm just going to rub those lines out a bit. If they're still kind of there, it doesn't really matter. You can see how I've constructed it. So there's my cube done. Uh, next I'm going to do my next uh, most complicated sort of shape which is the pyramid. Now the pyramid is going to be made up of two orthogonals. This one's going to be a little bit of a smaller shape and two horizontals. Now where you put them will determine how large it is and how much it looks like it's square. So there's the diamond made up of two horizontals and two orthogonals. Now what I'm going to do with this one is that I'm going to draw a cross from corner to corner. This is really important because what that will do is tell you exactly where the center of the pyramid is. Now this cylinder, sorry, this pyramid might be quite small in the base. I'm actually going to make it quite tall. So I'm going to make a dot directly above that center line that I just made. Now this line is not going to be that important, in fact, it's not important at all. So I'm going to half rub it out, turn it into like a dotted line. But the um, length of it is, is, and the placement of it is really important. So now I'm going to, from that point that I just made, down to the edge there, and down to the edge there. And the final one is going to go to the nearest foot here. And that's going to be my pyramid. Now I can half rub these lines out as well because they're not actually important and they're not going to be seen. So there we go. That's two shapes done. Now what I'm going to do is some of the more complicated shapes, which is the cone and the cylinder. Now the cone's a little bit like the pyramid. Uh, so we could actually put the cone on top of this cone, or this cube. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a horizontal and a couple of orthogonals to make a diamond. Now I'm going to try very hard to make this look square. So with most people's ones, they make them too long coming towards them. So you might be surprised at how short you need to make it. I think that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do like I did before. I'm going to go from corner to corner and corner to corner again. Okay. Now I'm going to do another two corners, another two lines. One's going to be a horizontal going right through the middle of that cross I just drew. Right through. Cutting it into uh, six shapes. And another one which is going to be an orthogonal. 
So now I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now the reason I'm doing this is not because these lines are that important, it's actually easy to graph a curve. So we're going to use some tangents. So from here to here, it's going to start with a tangent here, and then it's going to cross here, and it's going to cross here, and it's here. So remember, a tangent is when it graces. So you can do these little grace lines here, and then it's just about joining them. Now each one will have a sl of these four quadrants. That one's going to be a particular kind of curve. This one's going to look different. It's going to be a lot more long, and then quickly accelerate and come round. This one is going to do the opposite of the one I just drew. It's going to start pretty flat and then quickly come around. And this one is going to do both accelerations. So it's going to come around like this. So I hope that explains how to do what's called an ellipse. Um, so it's only a circle if we're looking directly down at it. Now this is for a cone, remember, so the center of it is just like the pyramid. I'm going to make the cone a little bit less tall. I'm going to do a dotted line from there so you can see how I got that line. And now I'm going to go from the very outer edge of that circle, down from the center, and the outer edge of that circle, up. There we go, that's my cone. Now a lot of that stuff can be rubbed out, but what is important is the outer edge. So I'll just rub those out a little bit. It's okay to see construction lines, how you made it. And then I'll just come down here and I'll darken the base of it. Alrighty. Now I'm going to do the another similar shape to that, which is going to be the cylinder. Now the cylinder is like the cone in a couple of ways. So let me first of all work out where the base is going to be for it. So I'm going to put mine here and so you see this diamond is made up of two orthogonals and two horizontals but I'm actually just looking at it and it doesn't look quite as flat as I want it to look and I want this to look pretty flat so I'm going to rub this line out a little bit I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer. I think that will look more accurate. And that's pretty good. I think I'm going to go with that. All right, so once again, I'm going to go from corner to corner and corner to corner. Just like we did with the pyramid to work out where the center, center is. But we don't need to know where the center is with this one. It's actually, we're doing it for a different reason. We're actually doing it for the same reason as the cone is to work out a nice curve. Remember the middle line, it's going to be an orthogonal. And there we go, we've got eight quadrants. Now I'm going to quickly try to do one of the curve. Here we go. So tangent, 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 tangent. And the, the, the curve of each one was going to be slightly different. Now that's the easiest one for me to do with my hand because I'm right-handed. This one's probably going to be the most difficult. And I'm trying not to move the piece of paper, but if 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 I was able to, I'll, I'll move my hand a little bit because when you move your hand you can do a nicer curve. Okay, so that's quite a nice curve and then I'm going to move maybe over here a little bit to do a curve like so, coming down and then quickly coming around. And this is always the one I find the hardest but I'll see how I go. So tangent and then coming around the mountain. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's all right. Now that would look like a circle if we're looking directly down, but of course we're not. Now this is the cylinder, remember, so it's not a cone. So what we're gonna have to do is we need to extend upwards on each four corner. So this is gonna be in front of the pyramid somewhat, but not that far because I'm gonna make this quite a shallow um, uh, cylinder. All right, so each four corners I've gone upwards, directly upwards, and now I'm gonna use the Vanishing point again. To do an orthogonal, I'm going to go directly across from this one to this one, and this one to this one, and this one to this one. Now these should lean up, 
if I've done them right, but yeah, and they do. Nice to know, it's fairly accurate. And once again, so this one's just a little bit further up than this. And it's going to be quite a shallow cone, uh, cylinder. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So things might get a little bit complicated with what's going on top of what. So I might do another cylinder going up across that just to make it easier to see. Alright, so that's my curve and, uh, sorry, uh, my curve lines. Now I'm going to echo those same shapes going along. There's one. Coming down to here. Two. Three. Four. Now the thing to realize, of course, is that the uh, ellipses are slightly different shapes. But they'll be joined by basically a vertical line. But I'm actually going to extend this a little bit further, or maybe I'll just do another one. So this can be one cylinder here. It doesn't quite meet up, but that's okay. And I'll show you the important parts of it. So everything on the top of this one is going to be important. So the top curve is very important. So I'll just draw this a little bit darker. And then it's going to come down. I'm free handing this, by the way. And then the only the curve that is seen at the front will be seen. And nothing much else. Now, um, so I've got a bit of overlap there, which is good. My final shape to do is a cylinder. And I'm just going to use a coffee cup for that. And I'm going to have that slight overlap. Or maybe behind here. So I have it behind. So always trying to think about where things are going to touch. What will be seen and what will be not seen. That's what it's all about. Alright, there's my sphere. Now I'm going to do another cylinder somewhere else. Just uh, for the point of uh, trying a different approach. So I'm actually going to put one right in front of here. Actually touching the uh, cube. And there we go, and there's the base. So this is going to be quite a skinny one. So again, I'm going to go curve to curve, or corner to corner I should say. Corner to corner. And an orthogonal directly through, and a horizontal directly through. I'm going to work out my curves. So tangent, 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 tangent. And I'm going to connect them. One. This one's going to be there. This one's going to come around like that. And this one's going to quickly come around like so. That looks like an okay ellipse to me. Now, what I'm going to do, that line has already been done going up, but this line hasn't, so I'm going to go directly up from here quite a bit, quite a long, to, a long way. And all the way to the top, and all the way up. Alright, so what I'm doing is that this cylinder will be directly next to the cube. So let's close off the shape. Alright, cool. So this is going to be the top of it now. And then I'm going to, once again, I'm going to do corner to corner. And an orthogonal passing through. And a horizontal passing through. And I'm going to use that to craft my curve. So one, two, three, four tangents. One. And now it's a case of just joining up the edges of the circles you just drew, which will be the edge of the cylinders. Again, there's some things that will be seen and things that will not be seen. So the front part of that curve and all of the top, but 
this part will be hidden, so I'm just going to half rub that out. And also the top as well. Now there's another way you can do a cylinder if you'd like. Again, you'll need something circular, so... I'm just going to use this... This paint... Desk here. Yeah, I'll put it on this side. Uh, so this will be... A circular object. And this will be like a cylinder is lying down. Bit free-handed there. Now, the circle uh, is not. It is actually a cylinder. So I'm going to roll, roll a line from the very edge of this, away, and away. Now the only hard thing about this shape is that you need to follow this curve. Now you could just find another curve. You certainly can't use the same shape you used because it'll be smaller because it's further away. But just for the sake of argument, I'm just going to use the same shape. And that's, so that is going to look slightly small, but only a little tiny bit. And then follow that in. And there we go, we've got another shape. Now I'm going to quickly just go around, rub out some construction lines that I don't need anymore, just to make things look a little bit nicer. And now I'm going to go in with a bit of a shading pencil. Now shading will cover a little bit later, but I'm only doing this just to get the idea that the light source will always be from here. So the light source is always on the left for this project. So if we're doing this part, I'll just I'll just fill these in a little bit, just so you can see these shapes maybe a little bit better. Obviously we're going to take a lot more time when we're Sorry to do these properly. But it is good to just sort of see these shapes sort of come out of the construction a little bit, so to speak. So you can start to see them as real objects. Shading takes way longer than the drawing. You've got to be careful with the drawing, the construction. But in the, in the long term, I think that shading is where you're going to spend a lot of your time. But if you're accurate with your shapes, and you've done a good job crafting them with your construction lines, um, the whole thing will look better. So obviously I'm doing this pretty quick in comparison to how long I should be doing shading. Never mind. Now the hardest one to, the, well, the easiest one to draw and the hardest one to shade is of course the circle because that requires uh, a lot of thinking. So I'm going to do lots of shading around there. Let's get less and less and less as it comes across. And then a little skim along there. Now I'm actually going to go in with a little bit of a pencil of a different type. Do quickly just to darken things up a little bit. Be aware of your pencil direction obviously when you're shading things in. Scribbling is never a good idea. But I'm just trying to be fast. Now when it comes to smudging, 
I'm a believer that you probably shouldn't use your hands. Um, but we don't have enough smudge sticks for everybody. So you can smudge a little bit with your eraser is a good tool for that. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm actually going to use my rubber as a way to show shine. So like a little bit along there, a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there, there, and there. Just to get the point across. But uh, obviously, we're all going to spend way longer uh, doing this much better when it comes time to do the real thing. Right, now what we're going to also do is we're going to put this on a stage. Now, I'm going to bring the stage down. I think it'll be more interesting if my stage is quite shallow. So I'm going to do, oh, the one thing to be aware of is that you don't want things falling off the edge of the stage. So I'm going to do the front of the stage now. Now just, again, just to be interesting, I'm going to have the front of this cylinder that's standing up almost falling off. Almost falling off the stage, just for fun. Okay, so there's the front of my stage. And I'm just going to give it some depth. Now I'm going to go to the very end. The stage there, there we go. And the very end of the stage here, which we can't actually see, so I'm just going to leave it to the imagination where it is. Now I'm going to do these lines going across, which will represent sort of the wood on the stage, or wooden beams on the stage, or however you want to think about them or talk about them. Obviously they're not going to be seen when they are um, behind something. And just a little line here, and a little line here, and I think I'm done. Now what you can do is that you can talk with a friend about where you meet up with yours to another. So I'm going to do a little um, ladder maybe here. So I'm going to have like a little rung going across from here to here. And that could meet up with a friend's uh, work if you wanted to. So a ladder, or you could have a set of stairs, for example. So I'm just gonna go uh, three centimeters, three centimeters. Now these are all vertical and horizontal, vertical and horizontal. And of course, we're just gonna use good old orthogonals to close this off. And then the edge of the stairs, we're going to do the same thing. Vertical, horizontal, have to make them up. Vertical, and then that one's just going to disappear. There we go. And obviously I need to keep going here because we can see them. So, uh, how long was that one? That was three centimeters. So I need to keep doing this one. It'll just go off the page. Three, three, three. Alright, cool. And these ones will just be going off the page like so. One, two, three, and then four, that's all we'll see. Alright, that does the job. I might have a diagonal here, just to represent the sort of the side of the stairs, if you know what I mean. And I might shade these a little bit differently. And you don't have to stop with stairs. I mean, you could have like a slide if you wanted to as well.
as long as you talk with people about where you're going to have things. There's some clouds around here as well, disappearing behind. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. Uh, this is a very sh quick version of what we're going to do. We're going to remember that the light source is always from the left. We have five objects. I've done a little bit more than that. I've done seven, but five is fine. Ladders, slides, stairs connecting to a stage in one point perspective and your horizon line, I want it to be about six centimeters down. And that's all we're gonna do today.